As the next phase of our Ukrainian support strategy, MasterCard will be launching a new MasterCard Start Path initiative this autumn that has been specially designed for Ukrainian fintechs and entrepreneurs. MasterCard Start Path is an award-winning startup engagement program founded in 2014 through which select fintech startups receive the opportunity to co-create and innovate, gain customized experience from MasterCard and access a diverse customer base through our company's global scale. Startpath not only allows... Uh, hello guys, so we are now at uh, Money 2020 in Amsterdam and we are here with Mark Barren, who is uh, the president of MasterCard Europe. Uh, great to meet you here, Mark. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's been a lot of fun. Just done a really good... Uh, panel with some very impressive uh, ladies from the UK, Ukrainian financial services industry. Yeah, and can you tell us about your background and uh, how, like, about your career in MasterCard and about your current activities? Yeah, sure. Look, I've been with MasterCard a long time. I used to be in what was called our advisors division. It's now called DNS. So a lot to do with data and analytics and marketing and then in 2004, I started looking after the UK and Ireland, and then two years ago, I took over as Mastercard, uh, as president of Mastercard Europe. Um, you know, we've been focused on on a number of things. Uh, we've seen a huge increase in, uh, in in the digital economy over the last few years, driven largely by COVID. But everything was in place; it was just accelerated by that. And you know, now that COVID restrictions have been lifted, we're seeing you know fantastic growth in uh, in volumes, cross-border volumes, travel. Everything seems to be coming back and looking um, looking very positive. Uh, you know, in in Europe, we have uh, over eighty-five percent of all in-person transactions are contactless. We um, we have most mobile devices enabled for for, for tokens, so they can use. Um, Android Pay or Apple Pay or that sort of thing. So we're a very advanced digital economy. It's different across Europe. Obviously, the Nordics is probably the most advanced. Um, but uh, I, I, we're seeing some really interesting things going on. Crypto is very exciting at the moment. Uh, um, alternative payment methods is very interesting. A lot more competition um, coming in from different types of electronic payments. So. Um, a very exciting time to be uh, to be in the industry. And uh, during the panel today, you announced as well quite big support uh, to Ukraine <coughs> and uh, special uh, Mastercard yep. program. Can you tell more about this? Absolutely. So uh, in in 2014, <coughs> we launched something called Mastercard Start Path, uh, which is effectively an accelerator for fintechs. We have about 1,500 companies apply to be part of that every year. We expose them to resources, to mentoring, to our, our, our ecosystem, to our major customers, to our major partners, to help them scale their businesses. And uh, we've had 300 companies go through that over the last eight years. We've just launched you know, some big names like Revolut or Divido, who are both here today. Uh, have been part of that. Um, we've, we've just decided that we would launch one specifically for uh, Ukrainian fintech uh, to help. Uh, and I, I wanted to do it at Money 2020 because the whole point of Start Path isn't just about MasterCard helping fintechs, it's about MasterCard helping curate uh, the businesses that fintechs need around them to be successful. And so uh, trying to uh, be a catalyst for, for that growth is really what it's been about. And uh, how, do you, how do you see uh, the fintech developments in Ukraine? And uh, is Ukraine much uh, more developed than other European countries? Look, it's, 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 it's pretty clear from what I heard on the panel today and from what I know of the, of the company anyway that it is pretty advanced. Uh, it's one of the, the more advanced. I mean, you have digital ID solutions, you have um, you know, digital only uh, banks, neo banks. You have um, you know real time onboarding of customer, near real time onboarding of customers. You've got card payments. You've got uh, I know our product Mastercard Send for push payments is widely used. Um, so I would say it's uh, it's it's a highly developed uh, fintech 
uh, uh, seen, but there's always more that can do, and especially after the war, there's more that uh, will need to be done. And uh, in your opinion, how new technologies can help Ukraine to combat the war? Um, yeah, I think um, the more digital an economy comes, I think the more efficient it becomes. So as cash becomes displaced, I know cash is there's a place for cash. It's been important for Ukrainians during this period as well. But as cash come, becomes displaced, either by contactless transactions or by token tokenized transactions or e-commerce transactions, I think you start to see, um, you know. An, an increase in the efficiency of an economy and com commerce as a whole and um, I'd like to see that that sort of acceleration happen when the uh, when the war's over which it will be one day. The whole world is talking about Ukrainian people they're braver and resilience to stand for a peaceful future as long as Ukrainians heroically defend the values of democracy and humanity the economy must continue to grow tech sector is powerful driver of the Ukrainian economy. Today, IT is one of the few industries that continues to operate, remains financially stable, provides regular foreign exchange earnings to Ukrainian economy, pay taxes in advance. We call Ukrainian IT companies and specialists heroes of the economic front. Also, I greatly appreciate the business community's interest and willingness to contribute to the long-term rebuild of Ukraine. Now, the strategic cooperation with Ukraine and long-term support are crucial. Ukraine is one of the most technology-advanced countries in Europe. We have the first digital passport that legally corresponds to the paper docs, the fastest business registration, and a DSE, special legal framework for the IT industry with the tax incentives. Digital economy is utterly important to us. Ukraine is a super strong technology country. This was before the war and it remains so today. Even now, we have united around 270,000 Ukrainian and international IT specialists in the world, first IT army in order to fight with the aggressor on the cyber front. Nowadays, we are taking each step in order to keep the country running in the face of Russian invasion. Now, we are boosting the growth of Ukraine's IT industry and working on creating a legal space for Ukrainian and international crypto companies to officially run their business in Ukraine. We support startups and the technology sector in many ways. It's still about to launch. We do help uh, fintechs grow and develop their businesses. And there's some very common themes we're seeing out here. There's a lot of cyber type uh, organizations. I think that's going to be critical going forward. There's a lot of open banking type organizations, there's a lot of digital identity organizations. I think these are all... And uh, as well, uh, Mastercard uh, has some developments in the terms of crypto adoption. And uh, what do you think about the future of the specs? Mastercard as well acquired CypherTrace uh, company So, so we've, we, I mean, deliberately a couple of years ago, we were relatively cautious about crypto because um, it was a fairly unknown quantity. But what we see is really two sides of it. There's free floating crypto like Bitcoin, um, which is really an asset class, um, an asset class without really any fundamentals. But if people want to invest in it, that's entirely their choice. We will provide the on-ramp and the off-ramp to that from uh, fiat currency in the KYC AML world via the exchanges to be able to buy crypto and also to sell it. Um, but we don't allow, we don't, we don't process free-floating crypto across our network. Private stablecoin and CBDCs, that's central bank digital currencies, that's a different matter especially central bank digital currencies, of course, they'll be regulated by definition. Um, and that we could enable on our network and uh, have done some initial technology work around uh, looking at exactly that. So uh, I think with CBDCs, it's a question of when, not if. Um, 
less certain about the future of private stablecoin. And I think crypto as an asset class is here to stay. It's just uh, too volatile to be relevant as a payment method. And what about blockchain patents? I know MasterCard has already more than 85 uh, confirmed uh, blockchain patents. We've got uh, around 200 more spending on. Yeah, blockchain is, um, is interesting may be interesting for certain payment use cases. We can't really see the retail payment use cases being particularly relevant compared to, to cards. For certain cross-border transactions, for transactions where you want to, to capture certain data or contracts with the transaction. So I can imagine a custody business could be, could be very interesting for, for blockchain. We've just started a pilot um, with the city of Barcelona on proof of provenance using blockchain. So proof of provenance of some of their, um, of their local produce, uh, locally produced uh, uh, foods and wines. Um, so I think there's lots and lots of use cases. We haven't found any killers, but we do have a big team that works on the technology of distributed ledger as opposed to uh, you know, the, the, the crypto that sits on top. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have a lot of innovation going on around um, what we call cyber and intelligence. So uh, we've just recently, as you said, invested in a company called CypherTrace, which looks at how uh, safe a transaction is in the crypto world. We've invested in a company in behavioral biometric company called New Data. We've in, invested in a hyper-personalization marketing company called True Layer. They're all here, by the way. We recently acquired a company called AIA, which is an open banking company based in Denmark. Uh, so I think digital identity, open banking, uh, um, cyber security, um, and maybe buy now, pay later are the big hot topics of the moment. Whether they'll be the big hot topics when we come back to 20, money 2020 next year, I don't know. Thank you for sharing France with us and thank you a lot for the support of Ukraine. It's a great pleasure. We're delighted to do so. Anything we can do to help, we, will, we shall do so.